here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Our guests for the hour are Jeremy Scahill, co-founder of The Intercept, and Matthew Cole, the national security reporter for The Intercept, previously an investigative reporter with NBC. Their new expose is Eric Prince in the hot seat. Blackwater's founder is under investigation for money laundering ties to Chinese intel and brokering mercenary services. And I hope we get in this hour to a number of issues, including Matthew Cole's recent piece on one of the Navy SEALs who was involved with the killing of Osama bin Laden. Juan? Yeah, Matthew, I wanted to go back for a second to the uh, to uh, Prince's connections and uh, work in Libya. Because uh, Libya is essentially a failed state. There's competing groups claiming to be the actual government, and, and not to mention all the other insurgent groups. Who was he working with in Libya? Well, it's a, it's a little murky uh, in terms of who he was working with. What we know about uh, Eric Prince's interest in Libya is that it began um, early on, almost, I, I believe it began by 2011, when the fall of Gaddafi. Uh, but by two 2013, he was uh, in Libya, uh, had come together with a proposal with a few partners to offer a complete uh, Blackwater service for counterinsurgency. He wanted to bring stability into the East and wipe out the Islamists who uh, were gaining strength uh, subsequent to Gaddafi's fall. And uh, initially, he, he had a difficult time finding the right partners. Uh, it was clear uh, when he was meeting with people that he didn't trust uh, some of the factions that he was dealing with. I think it was uh, he wasn't uh, familiar with Libya. He's certainly not a, an Arabist or an expert, uh, and had a difficult time trying to figure out who was who. And ultimately, what he did was he went after uh, meetings or trying to, to broker a deal with uh, a man by the name of General Haftar, who uh, is a now the head of uh, armed forces essentially in Libya, but who has uh, lived in the is a dual U.S. citizen, lived in the U.S. Uh, for a long time and worked with the agency, the CIA, for for many years. Um, and what he did was. Over time, he changed his proposal, and the reason why was because in in his offering of a group of European white mercenaries, non-Muslim mercenaries, he didn't get a lot, whole lot of takers. And what he was advised was that if you want to sell this program, what you need to do is give them something that was politically palatable. So what you need to do is you need to offer the, a solution to a problem that they currently have that they can't seem to control, which was migration, uh, the problem of, of, of migrants work coming up through um, well-established, uh, you know, uh, lanes, if you will, uh, routes. Uh, to try to get into Europe. And if you provide them with a border solution, um, that is something that not only will they accept, but you can probably get buy-in of the European Union, because the European Union, of course, is the one who uh, receives the migrants on the other end. And so, uh, come 2015, last year, where you had this crisis, a refugee crisis, as far as uh, Europe is concerned, and certainly uh, is, is very evident from uh, the conflicts in the Middle East, um, they have all of these migrants washing up at their shores, and many of them um, get there from leave Libya, regardless of whether they were from Libya. Um, and so, now he started to get a little bit more traction, because the, he wasn't offering a mercenary force. He was offering uh, a border control system. And what was um, — and, in fact, this is part of where the, uh, our story began, in terms of where we picked it up, because what we were being told was, is that, yeah, he's offering a border service, a border patrol, but what is really his intent is, is to build a mercenary force, and that this is just the fig leaf that allows him to do it, if he can sell this. There was a second complication, which is that Libyan government, because it's essentially um, a divided government in a stalemate, something like a civil war, and uh, it is a failed state, um, they, they're, they're financially frozen. They have a lot of money sitting in their central bank from all of their oil wealth, 150 to 180 billion dollars. But no one will allow them to spend it because no one's sure which government is in power and no one's sure what it, if whether the money being spent is legitimate. And so Eric had this problem, which was, he had the Libyans who were interested, but they couldn't pay for anything. And so the EU, partnering with the EU, potentially was a way to get half of it funded uh, from Europe and also to get the Europeans to help free up some of that money. And so now Eric Prince was offering something, not just a mercenary force, he was acting as a banker. He was a, a real uh, knight in shining armor for Libyan uh, government officials who were sitting there with no money. And uh, so what we saw and what we could we could see from and what our sources were saying was that what this was was an opportunity unlike the other proposals that he was was offering was the ability to be a banker 
for uh, Libyan officials. And that is what started to get him into some real trouble.